guys, I wanted to start a new series on this channel which is called The Dumb Questions My Scuba Diving Students Have Asked Me. Now, there is no such thing as a dumb question necessarily, but these are some of the dumbest things my students have asked me or that I considered were dumb, but actually could be really good questions and it's just about answering them in the correct way. So, welcome to the series. If you have any dumb questions that you want to ask or silly things that you think we should know as people who go underwater or as scuba divers, let me know down below because yeah, there's no such thing and we can all do with just learning more and being better divers. So the first question I wanted to talk to you guys about is a question I got one of the first couple of months I was uh, teaching diving and I remember thinking, wow, what a dumb question. Now that was really not fair of me, especially because um, I used it as an example a few years later and my friend was like, you know, that question is actually, um, it gives a lot of possibilities, it can teach you a lot about the ocean, and it's really dumb of you to consider it dumb. And yeah, I felt bad. I felt bad for um, thinking negatively about my students and that was a lesson to me. So hopefully, you guys can learn something else as well from this question. So the question is, why is the ocean different colors? Now, during that day, I think I gave a really bad answer, which was something like, oh, because of the depth, obviously. But in reality, the different colors of the ocean is so much more than just the depth. I think the truth is, back then, I didn't really know myself. And the color of the ocean is dictated by so many factors. So let's get into some of them. The first one, of course, is the topography, which is on the ocean floor. Now, if you look into the water and if there is sand down there, rock, weed or coral, it's all going to show up as different colors from the surface. Now, from the surface, all that azure blur, blue water that you see around islands and idyllic seascapes, that is just sand. That is boring, not so boring, there's a lot of rays and things which hide in it, but mostly just sand with very minimal, um, like, obvious life, let's put it. It's ideal for swimming, um, but a lot of people actually like muck diving, which is diving in on these kind of salt flats and mud flats, because there's a lot of small critters which like to live in there. A lot of these sand flats also in the tropical areas here where I live change into kind of grassy, weedy areas. Now seagrass is a whole different environment. It is one of the main places that dugongs live and graze, they're the sea cows. Um, it is also where you can see little seahorses and a whole bunch of small fish which are all um, living in the seagrass. After seagrass we get some like seabeds, another multitude of like um, uh, grasses and like tiny bits of coral, but mostly grasses and weed, which just kind of sway back and forth. They're the homes to a lot of juveniles. They're near the kind of intertidal zones where sometimes the tide is so low that it's very shallow there. So a lot of fish will go there to hunt or to hide. Um, but that's a whole different kind of kind of visual. I'll try and include some visuals from my drone and stuff so you can see the differences I'm talking about. Then of course we have very rocky reefs and structures. Now rocky um, structures and reefs can be dead reefs unfortunately which has occurred due to coral bleaching where the stresses of the surroundings have made the zooxanthellae escape from the coral and drift along the currents therefore their skeletons um, turn white um, if they're like they don't have any zooxanthellae in there and unfortunately, if none come back, they die. So we have rubble and coral reefs, which turn into these rocky reefs. But there's also some areas in the world which just have these rocky reefs because it's an area with very high currents. It's an area with large tidal movements. It's an area with frequent um, hurricanes or cyclones. So just coral cannot grow in that particular area. It's just not the prime spot. These types of rocky reefs are still very popular with a myriad of fish, 
but I've also seen a lot of like crustaceans and rock lobsters and things like that hanging out in the crevices. And then of course we have a completely different color when it's coral reefs. So sometimes if the visibility is amazing, you can actually see the outlines of the bombies and the coral from the surface. But if it's a deeper reef, you'll probably just see kind of like a darker mound or something like that. So that's just one of the answers to that potential dumb question. It is the type of um, seabed beneath the surface. The next thing is depth plays a large role in um, how the seafloor looks. As we know, as we descend deeper down below 10 meters, the color red virtually disappears. And as we get into deeper and deeper water, uh, it gets darker and grayer and darker. So if we are looking at like a light blue patch, which looks really azure, it's probably quite shallow with sand beneath it. However, it can suddenly drop off into a really dark blue. Once we get into super, super deep water, the water almost looks navy, purpley. And um, I was swimming around, minding my own business with my girlfriends, with the minke whales, being like, isn't this amazing? And then my partner was like, hey, you do realize you were swimming in a couple hundred meters of water. It's kind of a freaky thought that you're just swimming on the surface and there's hundreds and hundreds of meters of water underneath you. And you don't necessarily even realize because it's just so blue and you're looking into the blue and it's all blue and beautiful blue. But yes, depth. It can get very deep out in the ocean, especially if you get away from like archipelagos where the islands make everything quite shallow because there is typically a shelf. If you get off the edge of um, like the Australian continental shelf, it will drop down not only to a couple of hundred meters, but to a couple hundred kilometers. So anyway, that's a whole separate mm. thing. Maybe tens of kilometers. How deep is the Mariana Trench? I should know this. And the next thing that dictates the color of the water is, of course, the amount of stuff in the water. So during the months of October, November, it's coming up again here in Australia. We have coral spawning, which causes millions and millions of coral babies, basically, to be floating down the currents. And they kind of look yellowy green, but make the water look really murky and green. If there has been a lot of rain, then runoff from the land can whoosh into the ocean. This is why it's so important to be careful what kind of food you eat and what kind of pesticides you support, because those are the ones whooshing into the ocean. And that is also going to change the color of the water. So you might have more green water after a lot of wind when it's stirred up all the sediment and brought uh, sediment from the land. Uh, yes, and then what else can add? If there's a lot of things like plankton, where manta rays like to feed, again, you'll see little specks and things in the water. It kind of looks green, white, milky um, in, in your way. You can see current lines as you're diving. You can see the mixing of fresh water from rivers and um, the salt water. You can see the incoming and outgoing tide. The colors of the ocean are amazing and fantastic and I love it and there's still so much I could share with you guys but I just wanted to share this little video so hopefully you've enjoyed it let me know down below if you have joined the ocean pancake family and yes thank you so much to leaf shave for sponsoring this video and caring about our oceans by providing plastic free um, shaving so you can shave your body be super streamlined underwater without any plastic it's all packaged in recyclable materials as well and it's a company that cares for our ocean and cares for us so highly recommend getting yourself a leaf razor thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye